Hello again everyone. So today I'll be talking to you about right bundle branch block. Now I know in the, on the previous video I said I'll cover both right and left bundle branch blocks. However, I thought maybe after this video um, you can perhaps try and uh, practice on your own um, how the ECG changes arise in left bundle branch block. Um, so you'll do that using the four vectors that we discussed on the previous video, which I will again reinforce on this video. So hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to apply that knowledge and practice on a left bundle branch block. So let's get started. Now, so we have our right bundle and our left bundle and that's the fascicle so it's quite self-explanatory right bundle branch block refers to the block um, on the right bundle branch okay so as you can imagine as impulses move down here they won't get past that point because there's a blockage there so they will move down the left bundle normally and activate the left ventricle in a normal way so i'm sure by this time you can uh, already anticipate what's going to happen because this is this uh, it's the same mechanism as the uh, as that seen on the previous video where we discussed uh, about left anterior hemiblock so still uh, here we're going to have slow conduction to the right in order to activate this region here in order to activate the right ventricle so if you can remember our vectors vector number three which represents ventricular depolarization is going to be shifted to the right so we call that right axis deviation okay that's right axis deviation so the overall vector is shifted to that side so this there's normal left ventricular depolarization but later on the impulse will slowly move to the right ventricle so that the right ventricle gets activated as well. However, this is quite problematic because we don't get normal activation of both ventricles um, almost at the same time. In this case, we get left ventricular activation first and then right ventricular activation follows. So there's discord there so that we lose synchrony between the two so now let's look at um, the leads that we use in order to assess bundle branch block right bundle branch to be specific so we've got this diagram here with the precordial leads or the chest leads so here we've got lead one, uh, v1 v2 3 4 5 and 6 and i've just drawn the plane there for our axis so remember we said that we get normal ventric left ventricular activation and then we get a shift in axis later on where vector 3 is now shifted to the right hand side so we get a right axis deviation so just keep that in mind now the first lead that I want to discuss is V1 and then we are going to look at what happens in V6 later on so in V1 so I'm just I'll just keep uh, exchanging these so that you'll see clearly so we know that we we are going to get 
vector 1 which is HL depolarization so that is our P wave and because the left bundle branch is still intact it's not blocked vector 2 septal depolarization is also normal which means it's going from left to right now look at this carefully so i'm going to just draw what happens here so our vector one is still normal so we've got our p wave and we have v1 and v2 and vector 2 is going towards v1 therefore this is going to produce an r wave we are together so far and we still get normal left ventricular activation and this is moving away from v1 therefore in we are going to get an s wave and now this slow activation of the right ventricle see that that axis shift the, the overall vector ends up pointing towards v1 therefore this will give rise to a positive deflection because it's going towards this lead okay let me just show you on this diagram so this ends up going towards lead v1 so it's clear eh? so what's that going to produce let's put it in another color this is what will give rise to this r wave here now the reason why it is broad is because this conduction is very slow therefore it takes time for it to 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 complete therefore that is what gives rise to the broad QRS complex in uh, uh, right bundle branch block and left bundle branch block as well. Therefore, we get this well-known pattern R, S, and because this is another R wave, we call it R prime. So this is in lower case because it's of low amplitude. This is a deep S wave, therefore a capital letter. This is a high R wave, therefore a capital letter. Therefore, in lead V1 in right bundle branch block, you look for R S R prime pattern. And I hope you understand how this pattern arises now let us look at what happens in lead v6 remember i said the key leads are v1 and v6 so in v6 in v6 um you can see that as well v1 uh vector one is still normal so that's not affected so we get our p wave vector 2 is moving away from v6 there is our v6 there is our vector 2 therefore is it going to produce an a low amplitude r wave or a low amplitude q wave so it's definitely going to cause a low amplitude q wave because it's moving away therefore a negative deflection and because we still have normal left ventricular activation which is that which is in fact going towards v6 we will have an r wave because that impulse is moving towards v6 okay 
and then later on when the left ventricle has been activated this slow moving um, impulse as it goes to activate the right ventricle produces a broad S wave okay because it's slow conduction which causes a broad QRS complex as well and there is the T wave therefore in V6 you are going to get a Q an R and an S so in V6 it's a Q R and an S and the S wave we say that it is slurred so you get a slurred S wave makes sense right and it's quite simple so to sum it all up V1 so this is right bundle branch block so V1 is going to give you an R S R prime pattern okay and then V6 is going to give you a Q R and slurred S pattern very easy eh? and guess what that's all you need to know so as you can see that all those vectors that I talked about are actually important because you will be able to make sense out of what really is going on here um, you will be able to analyze the changes of the ECG and then uh, be able to um, link what is happening with the vectors that you studied so that's it for this lecture I'm sure you'll be able to do a left bundle branch block I mean it's it's quite simple and I believe you can do it so thank you for watching this video and once again leave your comments leave your questions I'll be very very happy to participate thank you very much for watching